A couple of weeks ago, I managed to grab one of those Ryzen 7 5800X from Micro Center for $299, but I didn't have a motherboard to use it with. So my dear friends from AliExpress contact me and they send over this ASRock Steel Legend X57 motherboard for review. So that was a perfect timing for me to pair them together and see what's good about this motherboard. Hey guys, welcome back to Rohamas' channel. My name is Ivan and today we are looking at this ASRock Steel Legend X57 motherboard. I know it's not a new technology, it's not the new fancy and super power hungry Intel 12th generation, but this platform is still pretty potent and especially paired with some of those Ryzen 5000 series CPUs, it can perform really good so we have a lot of good things on board we have pci express 4.0 we have two m.2 nvme slots covered by a very good steel cover we have 10 power face design we have dr moss mosfets intel gigabit lan abundance of usb 3s and usb 3.2 usb c as well intel gigabit lan 60 amp power chokes and the pci express slot is reinforced just like most of the makers out there asrock are putting some good thoughts and engineering on this motherboard and they're making it a very good option for those of us that want to upgrade from previous generations ryzen processors to the latest one and you don't even have to update the bios because this one comes with one of the latest biases that you can pop in your ryzen 5000 series right away in and just off you go you don't have to have the old cpu to put in and then upgrade to the latest uh, bios so they got you covered on that and uh, you can see it comes in this rather big box which i really like back in the day when you see a box like that it meant there's a lot of goodies inside nowadays it's a little bit different but still it's pretty heavy and another great thing asrock are actually outlining all the features and specs on the back of the box so if you're picking up this in a retail or somewhere else you can actually read the information and educate yourself on some of these features before you make a decision but without further ado we're gonna go ahead with the unboxing and then i'm gonna do a quick build i'm not gonna spend too much time on the details but we're gonna put the processor we're gonna do the cooling and you guys are gonna see how everything looks like or maybe you're already seeing how it looks like so but anyway uh at the end we're gonna talk about it in the conclusion asrock steel legend x570 first we're gonna see what's inside the box rather large box actually well branded by asrock and some of the features and specifications of the motherboard are outlined in the back with good pictures of the product inside so inside that box there's a sleeve that we can pull out and that's another box branded asrock very well protected this uh, package came in just a simple uh, box but it was not damaged at all because of the well packaged product so it looks like AliExpress have sent me a thermal paste. Heinze, this is actually a pretty good one. I have three or four syringes of these are from different products. Uh, but yeah, I have my own that I'm going to be using. And they placed some extra uh, kind of a air foam here for insulation. Uh, very good to see as well. And here's the motherboard right on top. What else is inside the box? And the contents are pretty modest. This is what we're getting uh, these days, back in the day in big boxes like that and premium motherboards where we're getting all kinds of goodies now uh, not so much so we have our user manual with warranty we have the asrock driver cd plus some stickers uh, but it's good to see there's uh, different languages user manual from english uh, french german spanish russian portuguese chinese korean japanese kudos to asrock for including a multi-language user manual we have four sata 3 cables for data we have included some screws these are for the nvme drives and stand off for the MV, nvme drive another one here and another screw so we have two standoffs for the nvme drives and three screws and that's about it nothing else is included into this package and now let's look at the motherboard packed in this anti-static plastic is always good to see and placed in the foam tray there is the motherboard with all of its glory nice that they placed that in this foam tray i haven't seen that before i'm not sure if asrock is providing uh, this kind of tray secured with the foam or that's aliexpress uh, securing the product uh, when they send it to me some of the things to notice right away and one of the things that i really like about this specific motherboard this whole heatsink attachment 
uh, servicing both NVMe drives. So if you place an NVMe drive here, which I'm going to be using to install my Windows, you can have this thick attachment on top of it that's going to be serving like a heatsink. And we have the fan for the chipset right underneath, which also is going to be blowing some of that air across over the NVMe drives. It's extra supported PCI Express 4 slot right here, four memory slots. We have nice and thick aluminum heat sinks over the VRMs, great to see. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight SATA 3 SSD drive mounts right here, two USB 3.0 slots right here for your front IO. And this is interesting, there is no battery for the BIOS. Luckily for me, I already have multiple of these batteries uh, brand new around here, so I'm gonna be replacing it right here. More USB 2s for the front. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. PWM fan headers, we have RGB 12 volt and we have addressable RGB 5 volt right here and right here as well. So this is gonna cover your RGB needs. M.2 Wi-Fi card place right here. So if you wanna install an additional Wi-Fi card and use this motherboard uh, with Wi-Fi capabilities, you're gonna be able to install one right here, something like Intel AX200 or 201 or 210, 211, any of those new ones. You can place it right here, run the cables and have the antennas coming out of here in the back IO. And speaking of IO, let's go over it real quick and check it out. So what we have in the back is HDMI display port, one, two, three, four, five, six USB 3 ports, PS2 port, we have USB 3.2, USB-C and USB-A style. And we have the LAN, RJ45, Intel, Gigabit LAN, and we have our audio ports right here. And like I mentioned, the two points where you can attach antennas if you want to use this uh, with the wireless uh, options and pre-attached IO plate, excellent to see. Uh, now the things immediately that strike me as I'm not too attracted to is the color scheme. I know what they're doing and if they've, they've been doing it for a while, but I'm not a huge fan of this kind of a black and white camo print. So in the bottom we have two thermal pads protected at the moment because we don't have any drives. We don't want to uh, expose them, but once we install the drives, we're going to be able to peel that off, put it on top uh, to provide cooling. One more thing to mention, right on the top, we have the additional power for the CPU, which is one eight and one four pin. Of course, if you're not doing heavy, overclocking or anything like that. The first eight pin is gonna be fine. You don't need to even plug uh, the four pin. And before I move on to the next step, uh, we're just gonna place the battery for the bias in the bottom, just like that. Uh, for storage, I'm gonna be using this Western Digital Black 500 gigabytes NVMe uh, drive. I have one of those crucial SATA 3 SSD drives, which I'm going to be using this one for all my game installs. So this is gonna be my secondary storage. As memory, I'm gonna be using this Corsair two by 16, 32 gigabytes, 3600 hertz uh, memory kit. So let me go ahead and pull this processor out. Before we move on to putting it on, we're just gonna lift up the lever here on the socket. Give it a little wiggle once you place it, just to make sure everything is in place and all the pins are correctly installed. And then from there, you can just lower down the arm and lock it in place. From here, I can install my NVMe drive. Just place it on the slot push slightly so all the pins are inside and this is the correct length for me so I don't have to uh, do any adjustment of the support on the back. Now keep in mind that if you're using this size NVMe drive right here you don't need to put a screw because the screw that is holding the steel shield for the cooling solution the same screw that's going to be holding the NVMe drive uh, down just place it on the spot and then use that screw to hold everything together. And I quickly want to see after this process if that steel armor is making a contact. And it looks like the provided thermal pad is making a contact with the NVMe drive. We're going to be transferring some heat for that NVMe drive. You know, the faster it is, the more heat is producing. So from here, we are pretty much done. I'm going to take everything and place it inside my case. Now that I have my case ready, we're gonna go ahead and grab the motherboard and put it inside. Um, what I'm going to be using for cooling is this Master Liquid ML360 from Cooler Master. I grabbed this one on a deal a couple weeks ago. Now with the motherboard mounted in place, you see how much room we have in this case. I'm gonna proceed on 
mounting the radiator on the top and routing all the cables and then we're going to do the rest of the installation i had to take the back fan off in order for me to put the motherboard in but now that it's in place everything looks great put the fan back on and so we're going to move on all right conclusion time and what do i think about asrock's x570 motherboard honestly i really like it last time i had an asrock motherboard was way back when uh, intel released the z77 chipset and i paired it with the 3770k that was a great motherboard it was one of the best options for the money you can select i used it for years actually it's still working it's in my motherboard archives i haven't used it for a while but i know for a fact that it's working and there's no problem with it so a lot of people are talking about asrock uh, not being as good as some other premium brands but Personally, I never had a problems with them. I have used their products for many, many years. Most of the products I was familiar with was motherboards, but I see lately they actually started making some graphics cards as well. So that's good. I, I'm, I'm glad that they're expanding their portfolio. But when it comes to this motherboard, I really like the features. It provides some uh, very thoughtful engineering on covering the NVMe drives to keep them cool. I never saw the NVMe drive, even the toughest test, the NVMe drive to go above uh, 40C, which is great. Uh, some of my other motherboards can say the same. They're definitely going 50 and over, uh, but this one is good. The heat spreader is very thick, so naturally disperses the temperature across its surface. And that little fan from the chipset helps sometimes to cool off things if, if it gets too heated. Installing it in the case was very easy with that pre-attached IO shield plate in the back. That's one of my favorite features on the later generations motherboards. You don't want, no longer need to fiddle around to push that shield and potentially cut yourself. If you guys remember back in the day when they were like tin uh, sheet metal, um, yeah, that, that happened many times to me. But now you can just put the whole motherboard in, the shield goes into the right place and you're good to go. So very easy to install, especially if you have a bigger case to kind of give you a little bit more space to work around. Uh, my advice to all of you before you install any of that, just put your CPU in, put your NVMe drive, anything else you can put in onto the motherboard. So you can make it more comfortable for yourself before you place it inside the case. And after that, for me, it was only um, a matter of putting the cooling, the mounting the cooling solution uh, and installing the memory and graphics card. And that's it. So, yeah, what can I say? I really like this motherboard. I'm going to use it for a while with my Ryzen 7 5800X and see how it performs. ASRock's BIOS is very simple to navigate. Uh, you have all the options, including the resizable BAR including the Precision Boost 2.0. All these settings are available for you. And if you guys know, the Ryzen 7 5800X are, is running pretty hot. So you might have to play around in your BIOS and uh, have some settings done to kind of undervolt a little bit and bring those temperatures down because uh, yeah, even with the 360 AIO that I installed, uh, this processor by default was going around 80 degrees, 85 degrees, which I really didn't like. Uh, so played a lot, a lot, a little bit with the PBO too, and I managed to bring it down five degrees. So that that's good enough, I guess, for me without uh, sacrificing too much of the frequency. Long story short, I really like this motherboard. It's easy to use. It can accommodate any generation riser processor, and especially those newer ones which all of us love and uh, yeah that's pretty much it guys hit the thumbs up if you like the video stay tuned to the channel subscribe if you're new check out the link in the description below if you want to support the channel and of course check out the link below for the asrox x57 motherboard from aliexpress with the promo codes down below and that's about it guys till next time you have a wonderful day